What's up, my Seville? Welcome back to episode 10 of the Creative Podcast. I have a huge guest with me today. You might have seen him on All Dev. You have seen him floating around on the internet. Almost 100 million views on YouTube, Accumulative. He's got a really, really cool channel. We are here with a big Titan comedian, Big Irish Jay. How are you doing, sir? What's <laughs> up, brother? I'm good. Flex I'm good. <laughs> yeah, flex that fat. Flex that fat. <laughs> Oh man, I've seen I've seen bigger people, you know. I've seen I've watched the biggest loser. <laughs> Great. <laughs> that's apparently not comforting. That's <laughs> apparently that's fake, by the way. It's not so, you know. <laughs> apparently they they like cheat and force feed people stuff and it's insane. <laughs> I mean they're still fat. <laughs> they can't fake the fat. <laughs> Well, some people like they lose and then they go back and then they get bigger than before and it was like a whole scam. It was like, um, what was the other thing? It was like, um, what's his name? Guy Celebrity, bike, Celebrity Fit Strong. Club? No, no, I'm strong. Like uh, the Tour de France stuff. Apparently you oh, can't. Oh, uh, Lance Armstrong? Yeah. Apparently you can't complete that without um, doing, dr- like without doing drugs or doping or anything. It, like there's, there was uh, a whole documentary about it. So apparently he wasn't the only one that was cheating. He was just, uh, he, he just ran his mouth a lot, according to the oh, documentary. <laughs> <laughs> well anyway not talking about doping too much <laughs> um yeah so i got a lot of questions for you i've been a big fan of you for a minute ever since i saw you on that all death video where um they were doing you were with patrick cloud and uh you guys were doing the whole shock um the taser. oh yeah the taser <laughs> yeah yeah all yeah. death was wild you guys did some crazy stuff <laughs> Uh, dude, I think the the craziest that one was that was pretty nuts. I was freaking out before beforehand because I'm like, I'm like, dude, am I is this gonna shock my heart? Am I gonna have a heart attack as we do this thing? And, um, and, but the the one that probably was like, uh, they had um, where can you can you pass a sobriety test drunk? Can you pl- oh, yeah. pass like a police sobriety test? And they. You know, they, they Ubered us there, so we weren't driving, and then they got us hammered. We did, like, um, we were drinking a bunch, but then they also had us uh, where you, like, um, what's it called? You, you, you vape. You vape alcohol. And I was like, dude, I just, I don't remember much after, like, I guess we did a whole segment. Like, they, we did the, the, the drunk police test or whatever, and then we shot a whole nother segment that I don't even remember. And then I, I don't remember taking the Uber home. And then I just passed out when I got to the house. What was in Luckily, the <laughs> mm-hmm. With John, dude, that vaping, <laughs> that vaping alcohol is no joke. Okay, yeah, note not to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible with my tolerance, so I don't even drink because I'm like, dude, I'm horrible. Like, I was like two sips and I'm out. I'm dead. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> and where you, you, you were telling me where you, where are you at right now, or where oh, you live, or where you? Where do I live? Um, I'm in South Africa, and I live in a place called Midrand. That's where I'm. That's where I'm staying right now. Yeah, and you're gotcha. in, you're in. Um, I'm trying to Vegas remember. now. Oh, you're in Vegas, right? But you're from Las Boston, Vegas, originally, right? So I, I was born and raised in uh, Portland, Oregon, and then I bounced to Portland and Seattle. But I lived, I moved around a bunch growing up, and then I started comedy in Boston. Um, oh, yeah, 2008. I, I was living in Boston. And I don't know why I thought you were from up. Boston. Maybe it was because of that. Um, it was that unpopular opinion where you were defending uh-huh. Ben Affleck. I, that's why I thought you were from Boston. <laughs> I, I still stand by that. He's the best Batman. <laughs> <laughs> People would disagree. I think he just got a raw rap. I think he got a raw rap. I'm still more a fan of Christian Bale. You know, I'm Batman. <laughs> I did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like. I mean, like I said in the thing, I was like, the, uh, I'm not defending the movies, but I'm saying, as far as like a physical presence and him as as. Uh, the Batman, I'm like, you put all three of, or however many, put all the Batmans in a room, I'd be like, I'll put my money on Affleck. Oh, no, he, he's he's killing all of them. Like, that's not even a, he's <laughs> half CGI. Like, that's not fair. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So speaking of podcasts, right, I, I just wanted to talk about the two that you have, because I've been watching both of them. You've got the Love in Black and White, right? Have I got the name yep. right? Yeah. And then you got yep. the J, and then you got the Hollings Worthless podcast as well. So 100%, you, you're nailing it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
two thumbs up. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to ask, um, the one, it seems like you more talk about relationship stuff. And then the other one, you kind of just shoot the shoot the breeze with your friends and stuff. You just talk about general stuff. W was that the plan for both of those podcasts or did they just like happen? <laughs> Hundred uh, percent. Actually, yeah, you you nailed it. So the 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 Holly's Worthless. I I've done that since. Oh man, I'm trying to think. So it's 2020. I've been doing that since maybe like 2013, 2012. But I, I don't have all those. All those episodes aren't available. I, I I first started it where it was just me. I would just talk for like about an hour, and I don't know why, but I would just when it was just me on it, I would yawn like literally every like every five minutes. So it would be a, an hour long of just me yawning. It was so weird. And then, um, and then I started having buddies on it and my buddy, Phil Fox, who, uh, excuse me, he, um, he's, he's been, uh, he's been away for a while, but he's going to be coming back. Um, then I was on this network called Potaholics. And then I moved over to this network called the comedy, uh, comedy pop-up. And so when we went to the comedy pop-up, I was like, well, I'm just going to start fresh. I'm going to, uh, I, I have all those old episodes. I might re-release those as like, you know, classic or, you know, the lost files or something. And then, um, <laughs> like and just like you said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and just like you said, that one was originally, I wanted that to be just kind of like a, a free form buddies hanging out and we're just shooting the shit. And then, uh, can we swear on this by the way? Yeah, go ahead. Fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, the love in black and white one, that one was uh, Manny, who I, I do it with my buddy Manny, and Manny, Manny Martin, um, Manny and I, when I lived in Seattle, uh, we were roommates for about three or four years, and he's one of my best friends, and and uh, I've had this idea for this podcast for a while, where um, it's uh, it's it's called Love in Black and White, because obviously I'm white, and uh, I didn't black, notice, but <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, I'm just really, really light skin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you 0.0.02% but, um, African. We established this. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, but it, the other thing, so I'm, I'm white, Manny's black, but the other thing too is, uh, I'm single. I've been single for a while and Manny is married. Um, and so I just thought it would be a fun dynamic. There's a lot of dating and <clears throat> excuse me, and a lot of relationship podcasts out there. My b big thing that me and Manny talked about, uh, we want it to be, it's a dating relationship podcast, but first and foremost is we're comics. So it's going to be funny based first. And then the topics are going to be all dating and relationship related. Oh, so, so you're, you're both, you're both comics. Oh, I thought Manny yeah, just Manny's like... been doing it. I think Manny's been doing it about 10 or 11 years. Jeez, you guys are like veterans. Yikes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some of us are just fledgling. We we're hoping we're funny. We're crossing our fingers every time we tell a joke. <laughs> do you, do you do do you do stand up? Um, I'm thinking about it. I haven't actually attempted it, but I've I've written some jokes down and stuff, and I've been watching stuff on YouTube and just trying to see because, like in South Africa, we don't have a lot of media stuff. Like most of our stuff is like more po politics, so that's how you kind of get on. So like for me, who doesn't who doesn't really talk politics stuff like that, trying to come with different angles and stuff, it's been a little bit difficult. But yeah, watching stuff online, writing stuff down, stuff that I think is funny. And then hopefully one day when the world decides to open up again, you know, when this stuff ends, <laughs> I'll yeah, hopefully yeah. try a stage and I'll probably You should, hundred percent, you should. <laughs> and I'll probably you should, for real. Uh, <laughs> no, but that's why, no, two, well, one, also I always see your puns your uh, uh, puns with the uh, the CSI thing and then the, ah, you know, that thing. I see him. I, I didn't know him. you see them. <laughs> oh, dude, I, I see him because I, so I, if you ever watch all deaf's uh, dad jokes, yeah. you know, when they do it. So I, not all of them, but I, I would say majority of those, uh, I, I don't know if I'm, I don't know what the percentage is, but I write a lot of those dad jokes, even for the ones that I'm not in. Like I just did, 20 I just wrote 20 dad jokes for all deaf that I completed yesterday but um so I, I love the I love the the puns and the horrible dad jokes I mean they you know and me, me and uh Tony Baker when we're we will play Call of Duty together and I'll I'll say him over the mic and Tony's just like man I'm sick of you Jay I'm sick of these dad <laughs> jokes <laughs> but I was going to tell you 
One hundred percent, you should do. You should try stand up. I tell everybody if you ever had an inkling or thought about doing it, uh, at least try it once because the worst case scenario is you you bomb and you never do it again. But you'll be able to say at one point in your life you did stand up, and not everybody can say they had that life experience. And that's the absolute worst case scenario. But you may go up. And you may bomb but love it, or you may go up, you may do great and love it. I mean, there's so many, you know, things that can come from it. So I always tell everybody, if you have a thought of doing it, when when this opens up, 100% you should. Man, cool. Yay. First first guy to tell me that. And first guy to actually appreciate the puns. Everyone hates me in my house. <laughs> <laughs> my mom can't stand me. I'm always just thinking of them. Because that's the only reason I watched that show was because of Horatio and the glasses. That's the only thing I remember. I don't remember anything <laughs> so else. So funny. <laughs> I love it, dude. I love it. <laughs> Uh, so speaking of which, um, you started in Boston with your with your comedy style. Was there like was there? Did you look up to Boston legends? Is that why you went to Boston for comedy, or was was there another <laughs> reason, or was it just because that's where it was the comedy for you? Um, I was so I had a day job. I was working uh, right before I moved to Boston. I was working at Yahoo. I was an operations manager for the small business division, and I. Um, I was my so my dad used to play pro football back in the day, way long time ago, and he played for the it, at the time it was the Boston Patriots, now it's the New England Patriots. Um, and so I used to go to Boston all the time before comedy, before I lived there. Me and my buddies would go there for St. Patty's Day every year, and we would also we'd go out there for sports and stuff like that. So I always loved the city of Boston. Um, and then I moved there in two thousand eight, and uh, I had thought about doing stand-up before moving there. And then while I was there, this girl, she asked me, or I was, I asked this girl out on a date. And she was like, well, I can't do it on Wednesday because I have comedy class. And I was like, oh, where do you do that? And she was like, the Boston Center for Adult Education. So I look it up. She was doing improv. And then I saw that they had uh, a stand-up class. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the class and then see what happens. So I took the stand-up class and then it went from there. But, and but I am, I am, I do take pride in that. I started in Boston and I, I'm a Boston comic, so to speak, you know, um, uh, uh, just cause I think it's a, it's a different mentality, different, not necessarily a different style, but you know, the, there's a lot of legends that I respect and look up to that started in Boston. Yeah. Well, I mean, Boston in my mind is Bill Burr. So that's already like, ugh. <laughs> I yeah, mean, I love well, Bill you got, Burr. I love you got Bill, Bill Burr, you got Patrice O'Neill, Patrice oh, yeah. O'Neill, who I think is a, you know one of the best that's ever done it. Bobby Kelly, Stephen Wright. Uh, then you have guys that like um, that the, the the main mainstream has never heard of that uh, that are looked up to by like Gary Goldman, Joe Rogan, uh, Bill Burr. Like you have this guy Don Gavin, who's mm. they call him the the uh, the the Godfather of Boston comedy. You have. Um, uh, there's a comedian, you'll appreciate this, there's a comedian named Bob Marley that's from Maine. Oh, I know Bob dude. Marley. I know Bob Marley. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I watched a couple of his stuff on, I couldn't believe it because I was confused. I was like, wait, did Bob come back from the dead? What's happening here? <laughs> <laughs> and dude, him is that that guy, Bob Marley, first of all, I, and I've worked with him multiple times. Uh, I worked with him in Florida. The first time I worked with him and I watched his set, Cause he like in new England, he's a legend. He is like, he, you know, he's, he's up there with, he would be like on the Mount Rushmore or the Michael Jordan of, of comics, but not necessarily mainstream knows him. And I remember watching him and we got done and I was like, Holy shit. I was like, do we even do the same thing? This guy's on such another level. Uh, he's, he is amazing. That guy is so good. Yeah. Speaking of Michael Jordan, I know that you're, uh, well, not exactly a <laughs> Michael Jordan detractor, <laughs> but I see Larry Bird in the, I see Larry Bird in the background, the action figure. <laughs> I didn't know Larry yeah. Bird had action figures. That's, that's, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I we, we only recently. David or, or, yeah, Bruce <laughs> only... D. Bird, David Ortiz. Uh, we only recently got like basketball. We don't do NBA stuff here in South Africa. We only got it right now on the channel. The only reason I know Michael Jordan is because of the Looney Tunes movie. So I don't know if that's the oh, greatest. Wow. I don't know if that's the greatest reference to to Michael Jordan. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. I I would have no idea. That's nuts. So you guys, you guys have never seen like 
or don't know. I mean, you've heard, I'm sure, the legend of Michael Jordan, but you don't know like the game. No, not not really, not really. We'd have to look wow. up highlights and all of that stuff. I mean, the guy who crossed over here really well was Muhammad Ali. That's like for like mm-hmm. American sports figures and stuff. But yeah, Jordan, we kind of missed the whole Jordan train. But it was fun to watch you defend Larry Bird against a bunch of people who love Jordan. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so, dude, that so was, yeah what was was larry bird your guy when you were watching basketball yeah so uh, so my i i mentioned my dad played for the the new, the patriots or boston patriots or new england patriots so growing up my dad played for the patriots so that was my football team right and then i was like okay well what other teams do they have in boston i was like they got the celtics i'm irish and they're the celtics i was like I got to love the Celtics and then the Red Sox <laughs> by default. So, excuse me. I was like, I like all the Boston teams and, uh, and Larry Bird. I just, have you been able to see any highlights of Larry Bird? I saw some highlights of Larry Bird, especially <laughs> after your episode. Cause I had to see, okay, why was he defending this dude so hard? You know, like the uh, unpopular opinion, you get murdered in the comment section. Yeah, oh yeah, dude. Dude, the thing I, the thing I love about Bird is he was just, he was a slow white dude that like if if you if you had a hundred people to choose from for a game, he would probably be the last one picked just by how he looks. And 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 then he would just go out and he would bust people's ass. And he was his 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 basketball IQ was so off the charts. Like, I mean, I think it had to be because he didn't have the the physical abilities of like a lot of the people he was playing against, but I mean that dude. I mean, and he would. I you you know what you should do. That's funny. Is um, look up Larry Bird trash talking, and hear all the crazy stories. Because not only was he amazing basketball player, but like he Larry Bird said in an interview, and he would do this all the time. Like um, the person guarding him. Like let's say there's five seconds left in the game, and they you know get done with a timeout. He would come on the court, and the guy that's guarding him, he would say to that guy, he goes, hey. I'm going to come off this screen over here and get the ball. And I'm going to shoot it right there in that corner. Just letting you know. And Larry Bird, and then he would do it. And he would say, he would say that to him. That was, he was like, just, you know, just winning the game is cool and everything. But he goes, the excitement to me is telling a guy what you're going to do and then doing it. (laughs) Is everybody in basketball this ego driven? Because I used to think Michael Jordan was a nice guy until I started watching like other stuff. (laughs) <laughs> and I was like, I mean, I think you, I think you gotta have that, you know, you, you know, there's, I'm sure there's definitely players that are very quiet and and uh, humble or whatever. And uh, well, like, I what's mean, his dude, name? I, uh, that there's that guy. He's kind of robotic. Like, uh, I'm forgetting his name right now. Kev did a video with him, like where his kid is the same as the basketball player, because he like asks Joe, "How did you score? Like, how did you score the goal?" It's like they passed it to me and I put it in the net or something like that. And it was um, Ka- Ka- Kawhi. Is it Kawhi? Oh, Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go. Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. Kawhi yeah. Leonard seems pretty quiet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he's um, like a robot. I, mean, dude. I saw him dunk, and his face didn't change at all. You know yeah, how, he is. <laughs> you know how yes, intimidating dude. that is if you're getting dunked on by somebody, and they just have dude. no emotion in their face. Like it's that's the- like serial killer shit. You just like, yeah, dude. Larry Bird. Uh, there's the uh, famous story of like they have the three point contest at the All Star game, and Larry Bird walked into the locker room beforehand and looked at all the people that were in the contest, and he goes, "All right, which one of you guys is taking second place?" <laughs> and then he and then he even took off his warm-up top he just oh dude there's hundreds literally like hundreds of stories of larry bird uh you know talking smack he he told a coach one time he uh or no he told charles barkley in the middle of a game and he said to barkley uh he goes barkley they're disrespecting me chuck and chuck's like you know they're on opposite teams and chuck was like what are you talking about he goes they got a white guy guarding me he goes I, dude i can't handle this disrespect <laughs> <laughs> he's nuts dude sports was different back then wasn't it <laughs> oh yeah dude and much more physical too yeah well i mean i was never much of a physical dude the, I, I don't know if you can see it but like i have a scar from trying to play rugby oh uh, like, rugby yeah like crazy. The, yeah dude um yeah, no, I found out that I'm not, you know, like, I think, I think they took all the big black people. Like, I think they just left us all with the time. I'm like small, <laughs> all the gene pool is gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, the, 
I'm a mutant. I'm a, I'm, dude, I'm a giant. <laughs> no, yeah. Like, like, you know, there's those people you, like, you think they look big. Like Tom Cruise, he looks big because he's on screen. And then when you actually see him, he's, he's kind of, sh- like, no shade to Tom. I mean, Tom's great. Love Tom. Even though he right. tries to kill himself in every movie. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> like, Tom is pretty small in real life. And then you get, like, people where you see them on, like, there's no way. Like, Big Jaw, Big Jaw has to be, like, seven foot, eight foot, nine foot, ten foot. <laughs> That dude, he just looks big. Like I saw him on an episode of Wording is Hard, and he was bigger than the table. How how is that even? Yeah. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> you definitely. Look- I think I think I think Jaws like six four. I think he's around six four. He's shorter than me. I'm I'm six eight. How did your okay your your mom has the all star vagina? <laughs> yeah, that's great. I'll put that on her tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mom was five nine, uh, and my dad was six four. So, yeah, you know, so you definitely thing. could have been a linebacker, but you chose comedy. Great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Speaking of that, I saw I saw a very interesting uh, trailer that I wanted to talk to you about. It was the Leprechaun spoof or whatever. Is <laughs> yeah. is that ever like a plan in the future to do like a Leprechaun, like a Leprechaun in the Hood remake? <laughs> I wish. No, it was uh, my buddy actually um, it came to me with that. It was his idea. He was like, hey, I w- it was St. Patty's was coming up. He goes, let's do it like an elf, uh, the movie Elf spoof with Will Ferrell. He's like, let's do it like a, a, a version of that, but Leprechaun. And I was like, I'm in. And so, dude, what's funny is uh, there's a scene and it's a quick scene in the in the little fake trailer where I'm on uh, uh, the the Walk of Fame in Hollywood, the on Hollywood Boulevard, where I'm like, <laughs> I I'm in, and I'm, yeah, I have like le- uh, Lucky Charms, and I'm like acting like I'm like drunk or whatever, and I'm I'm going like this, just dumping Lucky Charms as I'm trying to eat them, and dude, the street performers there got so pissed at me, like they wanted to beat the shit out of me because like, you know, like the 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 guy filming it, he's he's like almost like a whole block down away from me so nobody's around me no th- nobody knows what i'm doing and they like they perform there on the sidewalk and so i'm just they're you know they're at the end of the block going okay action start walking towards us and i just start going like this and it's dumping all over the thing and people are like hey man this is my fucking <laughs> this is my stage this is where i work at work and i'm like we'll clean it up we'll clean it up don't fucking murder me <laughs> But it's the street. I mean, ah, dude, the, it, that's their stage, though. The street performers, you know. <laughs> no, but I can't imagine walking down the street and like I'm tossing, gar- like I'm tossing garbage, and some dude is like, "This is my stage, man. Like, what are you doing?" Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah. dude, it's like it's it's the street. Like, it, it, first off, it's not a great stage to begin with. I mean, if you weren't prepared yeah. for a dirty stage. Yeah, <laughs> they were That's, not happy with me. <laughs> that was a pretty fun. That was a pretty fun video, man. I was just wondering if you were gonna do like a Leprechaun in the Hood fifteen or <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you seen those great. movies? Have you seen those uh, movies? I've I've watched a couple of like clips. It's hard for me to. Uh, it doesn't really scare me, like you know. So it's like I don't think they were just really scary. <laughs> I yeah, I, think, I, I'm I like, think they were parody. I, they just right? crack me up. Yeah, I, I hope was, so. <laughs> well, I mean, Ice T with a whole fake afro swinging a bat at a small <laughs> leprechaun. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to be scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I. Well, I mean, that shows you how little I've seen of it because I'm like, I don't, I didn't even know if it was supposed to be a parody or like supposed to be scary. But it, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a huge, I'm a, me. I'm a huge like rap fan. So um, I learned about Ice T, and I was like, and then I found out Ice T has a lot of acting credits, and then he was in Law oh, and yeah. Order. Or something like that. Yeah. He does the same voice though. Like he does the same voice in every acting role I've ever seen him in. He's Ice T. Like he doesn't change. So it was funny to see him in a whole afro still being Ice T trying to swing at a leprechaun. Yeah. Who's your who's your favorite uh artist right now? Hip hop. Oh, uh hip hop wise. Uh okay, if we're talking new, the newest one I would have to say is um, I would have to go. I would have to, geez, I have to think about this now. Um, I don't know if you Toby? know him. He's from TDE, Abso. Uh, that's, I think, he's my favorite uh, 
hip hop artist right now of, of the new school. Yeah, if you if you know okay. Kendrick Lamar and all of that camp, you've probably oh, heard yeah. his name floating around there. But my favorite um, MC of all time, well, my two favorites, so one, two. Uh, the first one is MF Doom. He's oh, my yeah. favorite MC of all time because uh, the whole Fantastic Four, because I'm a huge comic book geek nerd my entire life, been reading Stay comic here. books. Oh, seriously. Yeah, we need to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Oh, yeah. All yeah, right. so ever since I was, uh, yeah, like when I heard him, it was like listening to a comic book. So all of his albums, I've been playing them all of the time. I have every one of his albums since from when he started to 2012, even the stuff before KMD. So he's my favorite the MC of all time, but then my second would have to be Rakim because I really love ah Rakim. Rakim that's all he's on my yeah uh, yeah. Uh, do you have two favorites? Do you have two favorites like old school um, and then two new school or something like that? Old school, old school would be Rakim for me. Um, you know what's funny is I actually just ordered a, a clock. Uh, Sabrina Tony's uh, Tony's girlfriend, Tony Baker's girlfriend, Sabrina. She does like clocks of like hip hop artists where it's like the record and then the album is behind it. And I told her I wanted to get paid in full by Rakim as my clock. Uh, That's a great album. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So I'd say Rakim, old school. New school, um, I'd probably say uh, Fonte Tigolo from Little Brother is probably mm. my favorite. Okay. Um, I also like, dude, I, I also like um, Lil Dicky. Have you heard Lil Dicky? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I mean, yep. he's, it's like, I, dude, I don't think he gets credit be, because he like he's funny. He's very clever and witty in his stuff. I mean, but his his skill is pretty fucking nuts. Like, no, it's, it's, his... it's 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 pretty it's pretty like um I love that uh, music video he did with Snoop Dogg where they had the whole cartoon mm. professional. Yeah, no, yeah, Diggy's in Diggy's insane. I mean, he he's the only guy I know that will have a brain walk into a room while he's. Yeah. <laughs> I was in one of his music videos. Oh, cool! You mind well, telling Dickie's, me that story? Uh, uh the let me freak the let me freak music video if you watch it at the beginning um when he's at the the bar i'm mm -hmm. out i'm the bouncer i'm the oh the bouncer okay the i have bar. to go back and look at that i have to go back and look at that yeah. i listen to little dicky I, li I like little dicky a lot but yeah. yeah you mind telling me how that came to pass how did you get into yeah, that music video um i wonder i i think a, a buddy of mine ran like a hip-hop website and i think he had interviewed him and mentioned to them uh that he had a buddy out he was in boston and he had interviewed little dicky and his people and then he told them he had a buddy me that lived in la uh that was a big fan and they were shooting this music video um right across the street actually from the haha -ha comedy cafe which is now the haha -ha comedy club and um i i think we connected via email and i sent him a picture and i told him i was like dude i'm you know the uh, huge guy I don't know if you need like a bouncer or, or what. I don't I don't remember exactly the verbiage, but they were like, this is where we're shooting. Come down. And so I came down there and then we uh, we filmed the whole thing. Uh, yeah. In, in one night. Nice dude. You know, I mean, he was he was pretty focused on what he was doing for the music video and stuff. But it was uh, it was great. You know, I was actually <laughs> supposed to be in the uh, the male pregame music video. Oh. Um, but I think I had some I couldn't do it which now I regret. I wish I would have just done it, you know, but I, I think I had something else. I couldn't, couldn't make it. But, but. Ah, well, you know how that stuff works. I mean, you know, you, you get one thing, you get another thing and yeah, but I mean, you, you're still doing pretty well. I mean, if you're still like you, yeah. your comedy has been like, I love that joke of yours, uh, <laughs> the African-American time. <laughs> Wait, which one? The African American time when you were talking about how oh, oh, yeah. like people are like woke culture people are afraid to offend people nowadays. <laughs> so, yeah, so I've been doing that to my white buddies now. Thanks to you, they they don't like it very. Much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, just it's so over funny. Anything. Like you can you can just make something up and just be like, whoa, whoa, dude. Like I mean, you know, they'll be like, uh, they could be like, hey, can you hear me the salt and pepper? And you're like, whoa, did you just say pepper, dude? Uh, yeah. You can't yeah. say pepper anymore. They're like, yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm African, so it's worse. So they're just like, oh yeah. man, that's too full. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, man, can you pass me that shield body spray? Shield? What are you talking about now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. What, what, uh -huh. Are you inferring something because I'm African? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. Like, poor, poor dude. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was like, no, don't worry. I'm, I'm, I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. <laughs>
<laughs> now they need to come up with the now they need to come out with the spear body spray like they just need to just shield and spear <laughs> oh god no i've had like because i grew up kind of overseas that's kind of why i sound the way i sound a lot of people say i sound american never been there though i want to go there one day mm. it would be really cool but yeah i grew up overseas and i used to have a lot of that stuff all the time like we would be taking planes because my dad is a dip was a diplomat so we'd be taking planes and stuff and people would be asking me like oh my god how do you guys fly planes in africa <laughs> oh my god um, what the fuck? oh um, no no you see what happens is we 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 take the <laughs> elephants, right? The elephants, they run. <laughs> the plane is on their backs. And then the cheetahs just, and the gorillas, they just push it into the air. <laughs> we don't even have landing gear. We just jump out and we land it ourselves. <laughs> it's, uh, you, know what, you know what, though? It's like, it's funny because uh, it's always, you always want to know where's the, where's the energy coming from or what's their intent. You know, are they, are they like, are they being... You know, do they have a hint of like, are they, are these racist motherfuckers over here <laughs> or, or do they just not know, you know, are they just like, you know, in, in their defense, are they kind of ignorant and just don't know? Cause I mean, you know, you, no, there, like, there's uh, a difference. There's a difference. Like, you know, as um, I guess <laughs> I was telling this to uh, someone else that I was doing the podcast with, like black people, you're, you're like struggle connoisseurs. <laughs> Like you can oh, go shit. some, you can go somewhere and pick out the black people of that country. <laughs> like when, like if we go, if we go to, if we go to like Europe and everybody's like bagging on the Irish, we're like, ah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a Dave Chappelle had the 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 line where I I I was trying to find the clip, um, but he said he was performing, I think, in Europe, and uh, an Irish dude came up to him and said to him that, hey, we're the blacks of Europe. And then Dave Chappelle is famous line, and he goes, well, "Get out of my way!" He says, "N word, your breath stinks," or something like that. <laughs> no, I mean, hey, we we pretty we pretty good at that stuff. So yeah, I'm always like, I've I've dealt like going overseas and traveling and all of that stuff. I've had like stupid questions, like, um, "What's this? Are there monkeys at the mall or whatever?" And like people, like people forget how strong monkeys are. Like just because Michael Jackson oh, owned dude. one, that doesn't make them like nice pets to have. They can rip your face off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We did. We Tony was uh, brought up. We or when we were playing online, Tony was saying, uh, or somebody brought up, um, we were debating who would win in a fight, a silverback gorilla or uh, a grizzly bear. And How we were on like, the gorilla? Oh. I, I said the gorilla, because I was like, I was like, the silver, I mean, the, the, the grizzly has those huge claws. If it gets it, then that's, that's, it's done. But I'm like, the, the gorilla is agile. I mean, it can, I, I feel like it, it could, and they're so goddamn strong. I mean, you know, like, I mean, they, they lose to Tarzan all the time, but that doesn't count for anything. Yeah, yeah Tarzan, Jesus. <laughs> Man, I love those movies growing up. And then when I grow, like, have you ever had that thing where you watch a movie and like, it like sucks now because you're older? Like, oh, I've, I've had that happen yeah. to me. So like, I used to love the transporter movies until I started watching them now. And now I'm like, wait, you're all, you all just going to stand in a circle and let Jason Statham yeah. kick like 15 or even before someone. And he's in a business suit. I've been in a suit. You can't yeah. kick like that in a suit. That has to and be. And then it never rips. <laughs> like, like, it's just like, what is that made out of spandex? <laughs> even the Fast and Furious. I was a huge Fast and Furious fan, but now I, 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 I'm just like, wait, you, you're driving cars through buildings? You're Carzan. Like in the last trailer, yeah, Fast yeah. and Furious 9, there was Carzan. I couldn't believe it. Dude, I watched the, I think it was the, the most recent Fast and the Furious. And I was just like, I'm all for an action movie <laughs> and like, you know, suspend disbelief. I'm all for that. But Sometimes I'm like, there was something where I, I think he like shot a rope onto another car and then it swung the car. I, I was like, dude, what in the fuck is happening on this? You know what? Uh, two movies that did that for me were watching it again. I was like, oh no, it was the original Star Wars. I was like, yikes, these special <laughs> effects. I was like, holy shit. And uh, have you ever seen Poltergeist? Uh, no, what's Poltergeist about? It's a it's a scary movie that I think it came out late 80s maybe early 90s but 
at the time when it came out, that movie was terrifying. And now you're like, oh god, it's, <laughs> you can't get it's you're laughing too much at the special effects to to be to scared. be scared. Oh well, I mean, yeah. you know, that's that's like for the time, I guess. But I I think for me, like it was movies that I really genuinely enjoyed for a long time, and then I just couldn't do it anymore. Like a lot of Sylvester, not Sylvester Stallone. What's his name? Um, ponytail, ponytail. Schwarzenegger. No, not Schwarzenegger. Oh, uh, uh, Seagal. Seagal. There we go. A lot of Seagal stuff I used to like, and then like there was just one scene where I was like, no ways. He was in a corner, and there's like 50 dudes in the room, and he's just beating all of the ass. And I was like, okay, like not even his ponytail got messed up. Not not even. <laughs> I, I'm not a fan of Seagal. I can't stand Seagal. I used to teach. Uh... I used to teach MMA back in the day. Long oh, yeah, ago. I saw that post. What, what happened there? What's the story there? Like, um, how did you uh, get into MMA and stuff? Um, ever since I was a kid. So I going back when I was maybe 10, 11, I bought I, I first I boxed at the Multiple Athletic Club. I started off just boxing and then I did a style called Afaxaret, which our, our instructor uh, he was Muslim and he, I, I, the word he's, I don't know what, I don't know how to spell the word, but he said it meant like universal. And, um, and it was a mixture of like a lot of different martial arts. And then I lived in Seattle and I studied, or no, before that, I, then I studied Wun Hof Kyun Do uh, under Al Dukaskis, which the base of it's, uh, is called Kaju Kempo start stands for, uh, Karate Judo Kempo Chinese Boxing. And then, I moved to Seattle and I was like, I'm done with martial arts. I, I think I'm, I'm cool. I don't, I'm not interested in like point sparring or point fighting. And then this guy I worked with at Verizon, he was like, you got to meet my roommate's uncle. He was one of Bruce Lee's students. And I was like, okay. I was like, sure. Bullshit. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, everybody, everybody in martial arts tries to have some claim to Bruce Lee. But for like a year, he was like, I'm telling you, just come up and see. So I go, all right. So I walked into C. Joe James DeMille's uh, school and up on the wall was this huge black and white picture of him and Bruce Lee doing, it's called Chi Sao, which is sticky hands. And, uh, and I was like, oh, okay, maybe this dude's legit. And then I did the, uh, the intro class and it was kind of a 180 and everything I had thought about fighting. Um, and, it, and I was like, okay, I'm interested. And then I did that for like 10 years and then uh, had a school in Oregon and, uh, had a school for a couple of years that went under and then I was like okay I'm done with that chapter of my life <laughs> no dude working out is hard like I understand both sides like if I ever get the six-pack that I want I'm just going shirtless to the bank every day like I don't care yeah, seriously. <laughs> dude, I'm, I'm I just shirtless. need a g-string <laughs> <laughs> I am shirtless everywhere. Like, don't listen to them, Chris Hemsworth. You take off your shirt as many times as you want. <laughs> yeah, are you are you you seem like you're in shape though. Ah, uh, I'm trying. I'm, I I do MMA right now. Currently at a place called U. Oh, do you? Yeah, uh, I'm training there. Not to fight or anything. Just like because I have a day job as a programmer and it's stressful. And you know, I want to punch mm. everybody in the face at work, but I don't. <laughs> but um, yeah, I I I do U yeah, MMA stuff, UMF stuff, just to keep in shape and keep my sanity because that's what working out does for me. So that I don't, you know, go on a killing spree because that that's not going to go down well for me. I'm definitely going to jail. Like I'm I'm black and I'm that's African. Great, There's no dude. way I'm making it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's UMF stand for? Like uh, ultimate, uh, ultimate MMA fitness. <laughs> ultimate mma fitness that's that's what i that's where i do it ultimate mma fitness yeah and they are that's all awesome. fighters like they're legitimate like efc there's one of them is an efc champion the other one's former efc champion undefeated efc champion which is insane he won 14 fights in a row or something like that which is crazy and um yeah that's where i train and like, it's hard like it's hard i always look like a drug like apparently i look like a drug addict when i finish because my eyes are red i'm sweating <laughs> it's Dude, horrible i remember so you do obviously you roll you do jujitsu yeah right? yeah yeah i dude i remember the first time like i rolled uh i remember the next day i woke up and i was like i was like am i getting sick my throat? <laughs> and then i was like oh no it's from the people fucking put yeah. their forearms into my throat as and then i was like okay this is just part of the part of what you're gonna have to deal no, with it's like it's like it's like the hulk you know like how bruce banner is nice and then all of a sudden it's just in your face oh, yeah. 24 7 <laughs> like my trainers are, are you such... yeah sorry go ahead oh i was gonna say are you gonna watch the fight today uh which fight is it today 
Or tonight? Who's who's fight is it? Oh, Khabib, right, right, right. Khabib and Justin uh, Gaethje. Yo, Justin right, Gaethje. right. I totally pushed that out of my mind for a second. Yeah, I'm uh, probably gonna check that out. I'm a, I'm a Khabib fan. I, I do like Khabib and all of that stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out. But Gaethje's also looking really good. So I, yeah. I don't know how that's gonna go. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, yeah, yeah. It's like you know, it it is what it is. But I also don't like that thing that where people like fights to be fancy. Like they want kung fu movies. Say, in that, say that again. You like, I don't like bit. it when people you... want the fights to be fancy per se. Like oh, they want yeah. like kung fu movies in the ring, <laughs> and like you go so got you that know... guy with the beer all the time was like somebody do something. I was like, dude, yeah, why don't you yeah. get down there with your? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, our our C Joe C Joe Demile. He used to say he used to call it two things. Like because one of the things when we were doing uh, Wing Chun Do and sport jiu jitsu and shit like that is. It was a, we, we, we called it ESP, efficiency, simplicity, practicality. Uh, efficiency was like no wasted motion. So like, as an example, like I used to do Kempo and <clears throat> we used to say like, you know, like a, a guy comes, throws a, a hook and you, you block it and then you hit the arm like 15 times as you work your way up to the head. And you're like, why not just hit the guy in the head? You know, it's right there. So, so CJ used to say like, when you were doing something, if it wasn't efficient, he would be like, yeah, that's movie foo. <laughs> or he would call it, mar- or or he'd say that's martial arty. He's like, yeah, don't do that martial arty shit. Just fucking, you know. Yeah, it's like it's like all those fake martial arts videos. I love those videos. Oh, those videos. Are so- you had a great video on that fake martial arts stuff. Like it was that video where the dudes just stand there and just get kicked in the nuts. And I was oh, like, dude. oh. <laughs> dude, you know what's funny is my my uh, one of my students. He's also like one of my dearest friends. He sent me a video last night that I'm going to probably, it's going to be my daily video today. It's another martial arts one. It's a dude that looks like my dad sitting in a chair and like people are coming up to him and he's barely like, he's moving about this fast and then he'll like barely touch him and they just collapse. And I'm like, what the fuck is <laughs> going on here? Oh man. Uh, so he's a Jedi now? They're, they're using the force? Is, exactly. is, that, is that what's happening? <laughs> yeah. I got, <laughs> dude, the, I have like uh, two minutes. Just because I got other people coming here. Oh, uh, okay, cool. For the, cool that's cool. why I was telling you. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, so do you, you still have time to go on? I just have a couple more questions, and then we're about to yeah, wrap it up. Yeah, let's Oh, okay, cool. Because I was hoping to go for an hour. But anyway, my next question is, you mentioned that you're a superhero person, right? Um, yes. Do you have a top five superheroes that, that you uh, Silver Surfer. Oh, okay. Uh, Green Lantern. Um mm-hmm. I, I liked, uh, obviously, I mean, I think everybody loves Batman, but I also, I love Nightwing a lot, uh, or Robin, however you want to, you know, the original. Uh, and then uh, I like Jack of Hearts, really obscure. Mm. Uh, this, this guy, they, I think he, uh, Marvel. Marvel. His name was, his name was actually Jack Hart. And um, his, it was dope. His, his outfit, he looked like a Jack of Hearts off a playing card. And uh, he, um I think I he died know. in the comics. I yeah, and then uh, and the Hulk. Oh, okay. I was expecting a Superman in there because a lot of people tell me Superman. I'm I'm a Superman hater. I hate Superman. Hate hate. I'm not Superman. a bear. Yeah. I hate. No, the only thing is like first off his disguise. Like, how does no one? He drops his glasses. That's literally it. Then it's over. And Lois Lane, Pulitzer reporter, can't put two and two together for I don't know how many years. <laughs> Yeah, and then also exactly. like his weakness. I'm just like, dude, you can do something about that. That's what I also don't like about Superman. Is like he never puts lead in his suit ever. Like just mm. one one time, just just one, just try it out. See how it feels. Yeah. Like there's literally a book where Batman gets Superman's powers, and he puts lead in the suit, and everybody tries to throw kryptonite at him, and it doesn't work. And I was just like, <laughs> dude, yeah. Did you take notes, Clark? <laughs> You would you would love I have uh, in the in my living room I have a huge poster of uh, the Joker Joker's black and white and he's holding a can of Coke and it just says the Killing Joke on it but it looks like Coke. <laughs> yeah, um, have you watched a lot of the, like the animated stuff? Like, how do you feel about a lot of the animated stuff? Because some of it's great, some of it's not so great. Like they messed up the Killing Joke so much. Oh my God. That... You know, it's crazy you say that. I, I don't watch a lot of the animation stuff, um, but I, st- I was here um, watching, I started to watch the Killing Joke one. 
And I was like, I was like, I don't remember this from the comics. I was like, this is. It, it wasn't there. It was. It, it was tacked on. It was. They just. They decided to throw in this weird dad, bat girl subplot. That's. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. I didn't. But I didn't. I it, wasn't feeling. I mean, it. how is he supposed to look Jim in the face after that? Like, like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you imagine, yeah. like, he's your best friend and, you, like, his daughter? Seriously, bro? That, uh, that's just, that's violation of the bro code on another level. Oh, my God. I, yeah. I, <laughs> you're dead to me. Like, if I find yeah. out you're, you're we're, we're burying it, like, delete. Like, you know how you take stuff to the trash can? That's our friendship. Right. Boom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. So... Uh, two more things. Um, you on this whole, you don't like nature. Like it's a big thing that I've seen in a lot of <laughs> <Yeah>. your videos. <laughs> You've been informing fuck, us yeah, of flame. <laughs> You've been informing us of flaming sharks and underwater tornadoes yeah. and all. Have you? Have, has that always been a thing with you? Have you never liked nature and hiking and all of that stuff? Uh, I well, I I got a bad knee, so I can't go hiking. I can't do like at this point, I can't do like long walks and shit like that. Can't go running or anything like that. But then also like, I'm not a fan of fucking bugs or <laughs> or shit like that. I, plus, there's a lot of stuff I'm like, uh, you don't you don't need to you don't need to be around it. I don't need to see it. Like, <laughs> dude, I was I was living in Phoenix. Um. And dude, I we walked out one morning and there was a tarantula like literally like about this big. It was huge. Just uh, like at the on the welcome mat. Like it was like the welcome mat. And I was like, fucking burn that thing. That sounds, like, whole... that sounds like Australia. Like that sounds like the outback. Dude, it was, I mean, uh, uh, Arizona, like, and, the, and my, the people I was living with, they're all casual. But they're like, oh yeah, we had a rattlesnake in the backyard and there's a tarantula. We just moved it. I'm like, move it. I'm fucking I, I, I hate it. When, I hate it when people do that. I hate it when people do that. Like my dog doesn't yeah. bite. Yeah, he doesn't bite you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't 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 tell me he doesn't bite. Don't tell me it's fine. It's, it's freaking. I would have a heart attack if I saw like <laughs> I saw one of Tony Baker's yeah. videos where he was talking about those spiders that size. It was like it doesn't even bite. It tackles. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. seriously. <laughs> No, Dude, I'm, I'm also I'm also fighter. team anti I'm also team anti nature. Um, like the flies, I actually want to be Hitler of flies. I want to be the Hitler to flies. Like if if <laughs> if we could ever <laughs> if we could ever pull a Holocaust on flies, I'm I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> Am I going to get in trouble for that? I wonder. Yeah, you're going to get canceled. <laughs> oh yeah, my career's over. <laughs> yeah. He said he wanted to be a Nazi to flies because, like, flies yeah. have. Imagine flies having Twitter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Be like, hey, what's the buzz? Okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, my Seville? Um, so we had a bit of technical difficulties, which really sucked because this was one of my biggest interviews of all time. Thank you to Mr. Irish J for coming through. We, we, I tried to get him back so we could finish his last point, but it didn't look like the recording was going to, you know, get through. So it really, really sucks. It's, you know, I guess that's how the cookie crumbles nowadays. But... If you did enjoy it, do hit that like, that share, that subscribe. Maybe build up my profile so I can get them back again. All of that great stuff. And I have to say, I have to say, thank you once again to Mr. Big Irish J. Thank you so much. He already had a busy schedule, but he still managed to slot me in. Now, if you like this video, I do have another episode up here. I got a playlist down there, and you can click on my icon to subscribe. Remember to ring the bell if you do subscribe and hopefully we won't have technical issues again. But for now, Meister Man and Big Irish Jay gotta be out. Peace, peace, peace.